how to get a list of layers from QGIS projects you have in a directory. So in this video, I will be exploring how I can get the list of layers that I have in a project and then how I can enhance that by going through different projects that are saved in a specific directory. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. So this is a typical project that you may have in which you have a lot of layers on the left and you map canvas, etc. And then you can have dozens or hundreds of these type of projects. Now, the idea is using PyQGIS, how can I do that in a kind of automatic way? So I've been going through these 100 days of PyQGIS thing and I'm learning a few things that I consider a kind of tricks in my daily workflow that I think that can be helpful for other people out there. So let's dive in. So we have opened the Python console here and the first thing that we need is to get the project itself. So I'll just call this project QGIS project again getting the instance part here so this gets the project itself now if you go to the documentation the first thing that we want to get is a method that we can use now there are several methods including the absolute file path but in this case i'm going to be using what it's called right here file name this one file name because this returns the project's file name and this is exactly the first thing that I want to get is what is the project's file name. Okay, so now what I can get is, okay, I can say the file name is going to be equal to the project file name and let's test this. Let's just print file name to check that everything is as expected. There you have it. So I got my name of my project. So I got my file name. Now what I want to do is check how many layers are there in my project? If we go again to QGIS project, you'll notice that there is something here called a count. And this returns the number of register layers. So this is going to help us because we already have a method that can tell us how many layers we have. So let's do that now. Now I want to get the count of layers and this is going to be equal to project.count. And again, to check that everything is working just print and there you go i got 11 here so let's check one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven perfect so we got 11 layers so another thing that can be neat to have is what about the coordinate reference system that the project is in so let's go back here let's see there is another method that is called crs and this returns the project's native coordinate reference system this is already working we can get the crs by just crs project is going to be equal to project and we're going to call the method crs now project is because we already have stored this part in the variable project so qgs project we have selected the instance store it in this variable and now we can call this method crs so if we click run so now let's print it print crs project Okay, so we get the reference system here. So we got this coordinate reference system and EPSG 5070. Now, probably we don't need all of this. We just need this part here. So let's see how we can get that part. Now, if we click on CRS, it tells us that it returns this type of object, which is QGS coordinate reference system. So if we click here, it's an hyperlink here. We can just scroll down and we probably want the auth ID. Okay, so the auth id is going to return the authority identifier of the crs okay, so we're going to do that auth id i'll just going to add to it okay i want to get the auth id print and there you go now i only have epsg 5070 okay so now we got the file name we got the number of layers and we get we have the crs project so what we need to do next is the following so we got all of this. Let's try to make it uh, the print looks a little bit better. So I'll just put print again here, print, print, and I'll say, okay, let's add some project file name, something like this, maybe like this. Project number of layers. Project CRS. And of course, because the count layers, it's a number, we need to convert this to a string. 
And now we have we have the project file name, we have the project number of layers that is 11, and we got the EPSG code that is 5070, which you can see it's whatever we have in this part here. It's time to actually get the layers from our project. Let's see how we can get our layers. And if we check here, it says map layer and map layers. And if we see here the map layers method will return a map of all the register layers by id so we're going to be using this one so to get the layers we're going to say okay layers it's going to be project dot map layers and let's comment this once here when we don't require them at the moment and let's print the layers so we see what are we getting and this is what we have so we got like a key value pair, so it's a dictionary where you have these things here. And we're only interested in the value, so we can say, okay, for these layers, we only want to get the values. So and this is a Python way of getting from a dictionary just that far. And we click run, then we get those values. Now, if we want to print it in a list, we can uh, do the following. For layers, so that's a variable in layers, which we already have, we want to print layer and this we don't require anymore now we have our layer we got airports boundaries etc but we got this thing here where we actually just want the name of the layer itself let's go to the documentation again so if we go to the documentation we're going to be seeing that the map layers we click on that returns a map of all tracer by layer and we can click on the map layer itself it returns qg's at map layer and then we have all of these methods that we can use and i'm going to use this one name which returns the display name of the layer so this is the one we're going to use we just want the name we can just add name like this okay perfect so we're going the name we've got airports airspace boundaries class airspace etc now notice that the values here are order in alphabetical um, order and not as they are displayed on the layer tree that's perfectly fine for what i want to do at this moment but maybe if you want to have something in a structured way we will need to do something else now we have a function script it's giving me the layer but it's not really doing too much at the moment so yeah, but at this point it's not really so useful so now what we want to do is to export as a csv so to export as a csv we're going to use import csv and the next thing that we want is to put where it's going to be the file okay, so put it after this one so i'm going to open a file and i want to have it in this position project layers.csv new line Perfect, something like this as file and we need a writer okay, something's missing okay so we need to this one's not here okay it's file and the first thing is to have a writer so i've got writer is csv dot writer for the file and put the heading so in this case i want to write the following row so writer dot writer row and we're going to have the following six tags expecting the list First thing I want to have is a counter, then I want to have the layer name, after the layer name I probably want to have the layer source, and finally after the layer source I want to have the layer CRS. Okay, so that's what we want to do, then we need to move this part here like this. Now let's define the counter, because it's not defined yet. So the counter is going to start it at 1, because Python starts by default at zero but i don't want the zero i want to one and then we need to increase this counter for each layer so counter is going to be plus one so each time we have a layer is going to be added to the counter but then once we exit the loop it's going to start from zero again okay so now what are we going to write here so we don't need this part here we're going to have another writer right row something like this so we already have the counter defined so we can just put that counter and the layer name we already have it how we do that is like this now the layer source is still missing but the layer crs we can just put layer crs dot auth ip okay missing this part here now for the layer source if we go to the documentation itself there is a method called source which returns the source of the layer and this is in the qgs map 
layer part of the API. Okay, so we want to use, okay, so we go back here. So it means that we just need to put layer.source and it should be good to go. So let's try it out. Okay, so it's finished. Now let's open where the CSV stored. Okay, so I got this and I'll open it with Excel just so it's easier to visualize that it's in comma delimited format. Okay, so this is what we have here at the moment. We have the counters working. We have the layer name. We have the layer source and we have the layer CRS. So it's pretty good. It's working okay. But it's just you doing one project and that is not what we want. So I'll just close this. Click do not save. And now I'll return here and we want to transverse or traverse a directory. Probably it's a good idea to import OS and we need to declare where our directory is. The project files that I want to uh, read are stored in this path. So this is what I'm going to be doing. What we need to check now is how to read this directory. We need to check for all the QGCs in a directory. Now, if you got projects in store in a geo package, this is not going to be working. But if you're just using QGZ or QGS, you just need to adapt it, then it should be able to work. What we need is for file in our OS list directory, which is the directory which we have already set the path at the top. We want to check first if the file ends with QGC, only if it ends with QGC. So if you have any anything else, it's not going to be looking at it. But if the file ends with that QGC, we're going to move this part here. Everything that we had here at the top, we are going to move it at this place here. And then we need to format. So we're going to get the project. We're going to get the file name. And then we need to move this part here as well to be within the if statement at the end is OK. We need to clear the project. So if we go back to our QGS project and we check for the clear method, it clears the project, removing all settings, blah, 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 because we have uh, read the project. It's inside and now we need to clear it. Okay, so we don't have anything strange there. OK, so let's try it out and let's see what happened. Okay, but we're still missing something here. Okay, we, want, we need to tell where we want the project to be read. So we're going to read the project. So if we go back here, the documentation says read. It reads the given project from the given file. So we need to do that. We want to read and from where we want to read it. Okay, so for that, OIS path.join directory file and we need to close this parentheses and now we can try it out you can see that as qgs is traversing through all the files it opens and closes them because that's what we're telling it so if you got a lot of projects and a lot of files it's going to take a while because we're still using the gui interface probably if we use it without the GUI, it's going to be faster so let's see what we have now so let's open this project okay so here it is. We got the counter, we got the layer name, the layer source, and the layer CRS. Now, probably it would be a good idea if we add also the name of the project here. So we're going to be adding that. Normally, it's good to have a timestamp of when something was done. So let's add those things. Okay, so let's add the timestamp first. From date time, we are going to import date time. Okay, so we got the directory and now we want to declare the timestamp. And for that, we're going to use this format because I work with UTC. So I'm going to use UTC now. And this is the format that I want year, month and day with the time, hours, minutes and seconds and add Zulu at the end. So that's the timestamp. And here I want to save this file, something like this. So this is what I want to save. I want to know with something it's finished, so I'll just add here, print, finish. Simple, let's try it. Okay, so here I have an error. Now it's going to do it. It's reading all the different layers. You can notice, just I declare variable here. Okay, so now it's reading through all of the different layers and it tells me that it has finished. So let's see how it looks now. Okay, so now I have a timestamp added. So I know that this is the last one. So if I open this one, I got this here. So what I'm missing is what I was talking about, the, the file name and the base name. 
Okay, so I want to know those. Okay, so let's tweak a little bit. We're almost done with this. I think it's pretty good until the moment. Okay, so before the counter here, I want to know what is the project project path path something like this and probably the project name now to get the project name we can use if we go back to the project we can use this one here base name returns the base name of the project without the path okay so we will use that that is part of the qgs project thing here for this what we need is now to define here base name it's going to be equal to project dot base name okay so now we can just put it here before the counter we want to first have the base name or maybe the file name later we want the base name then the counter etc and let's try it out so again it's reading through all the different projects it's looping through the layers and it's writing and now i know it's finished because it's right here so let's see what we have now okay so this is a little bit bigger yeah, I'll open it with cell. Ah, oh, come on, it's looking great now. I got the path, got the project name, the counter. So this is the layers one, two, three, four, five. The layer name, the layer source, etc. Now the last thing that probably is a good idea is instead of having this sprint thing here, we are going to use something else. And if we go to the developer cookbook, there are ways to communicate with the user. And we are just going to use the QGS message bar class to be able to communicate to the user. And in this case, we're going to just publish a success message. So instead of having that print, let's use the iFace, which is already here from the API interface, message bar dot push message. And I'm just going to write layers written successfully. I want the level of to be a three, because if we go back to three, three is a success part right here, success. And for the duration, we can set a number as we want. So by default is minus one. So you need to click to close it, but I'm just going to leave it for 10 seconds. I think that is enough and click run. So now it's reading through all of the different files. It writes and at the end it says layers written successfully. And if we open our file with Excel or any spreadsheet software that you have, then we got something like this. And with that, I have shown you how you can read layers from a project, go through a directory, read those layers from a project, go to a directory to read the different layers from different projects, save it to a CSV. And hopefully with this, you can find different ways on how you can implement PyQGS with QGIS. Hope to see you in the next video. And I'm still going with the 100 days of PyQGIS.